All right, this is the uh, dogs and cats example that we worked on the last day in the class. Um, so there's a couple of additions that we want to make. There's one very simple thing which C Sharp introduces. It's the idea of a property of a, a class or an instance of a class. And then we get on kind of to the next big sort of pillar of OO, which is this idea of inheritance. So that's what we're going to sort of cover this week. And so, okay, let's do the first thing. The first thing is the idea of a property. All right. So properties are a very good idea in C-sharp, I think. Java has got a similar concept, but I think it's not as clean as the way it's done in C-sharp. And also you can do it in C++ as well. The basic idea is that sometimes you want certain things to look like their actual fields, their values, but they're actually, for example, calculated. So the example that I give you would be if you take a circle class, say we've got a class to represent a circle. So what are the properties? What are the uh, fields that we would like to store about a circle class? We were making one. Radius. What would we store? Certainly the radius. What else would we store? Uh, the diameter. Okay. Now the <laughs> diameter is an interesting one. There's immediately we have we have an example of something that might be a property. Is it possible to have um, a diameter of ten and a radius of three? No. no. So the diameter is very much a function of the the radius, isn't it? So there's, there's one. You might want it to look like it's, it's, it's a property or it's a field of a class, but actually it's calculated. Do you follow what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. So um, anything else that we might want to store about the circle? Center. Maybe let's store the center point, right? So we'll do this and I'll show you. You can see straight away the advantage of making something a property, right? It's, it's, it's something that looks to the outside as if it was just a field, but actually it's calculated based on some other fields. Do you follow? You get what I'm talking about? All right, so can you think of anything else then that might be in a circle that might be a property? Circumference. The circumference, yeah. So that's calculated based on the radius. You know, you want to go something like circle dot circumference. It's not something that you can set, sure it's not. You can only set the radius, but you can, um, you can get those other properties, but you can't set them. Do you follow? Okay, anyway, we'll make one, right? Here we go. So this is just um, the same program that we're working on the last day. It's the dogs and cats one, you know? So I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to add a new class here. And this class is going to be called a circle class. So I'll click on add and then I get my circle class. So the first thing I'd like to do when, I, uh, when C Sharp or when Visual Studio or Mono develop makes me a class like that, it doesn't put the word public in front of the class. Um, so I always put the word public in there. There, you can put private and protected and stuff, but to be honest, nobody ever uses them. You almost always put public in there. It's the same in C++. You can put public or private in there. And we'll get to what those mean, you know, public, private, and protected, because it's related to this idea of a property of the class. So anyway, now I have a class called circle, right? I'm going to make a um, field in the class called a radius. Um, actually, let's make it a float. Wouldn't that be better? <coughs> I can make this public, public float radius, and then public uh, float, we'll say the x coordinate of the center, and public float y for the y coordinate of the center. Alrighty, so I want to now go and make a constructor for this. So the constructor is a significant method because what's the name of the constructor going to be? The same name as the class, isn't it? Right, so I'll make two constructors. I'll make a default constructor, which just sets everything to be zero. So the radius is equal to 0, 0.0f. And then the x is equal to 0, 0.0f. Can anyone just tell me, why do I put 0.0f there? Doesn't that look, look a little bit long-winded? You're casting it. it. In fact, I'm not casting it if I put the 0.0f there. What am I doing? I'm doing the opposite to it. If I didn't put 0.0f and I just put 0 there, what would it do? What's that? Well, actually, it wouldn't make any difference because radius is a float. And if you just do radius equals 0, if you put 0 without 0.0f, it's an integer. So it's actually doing a, an implicit conversion from an integer to a float. But if you do uh, radius equals 0.0f, this is the float constant, 0. So it just makes the compiler treat it as a float. You guys probably don't know what a float is really, do you? What is a float? 
you guys who were here last year remember because we did floats we'll certainly spend at least one class looking at what what is a float and how a float stored floats are stored using does anybody know no they're not well good guess Ints are stored using tooth complement. Floats are stored using a different format altogether called IEEE 754. And it's a, an IEEE standard. What, what other standards do IEEE make, just, just out of curiosity? Does anybody know? They make the Wi-Fi and all of the Ethernet standards. 802.11 are all the Ethernet standards. But they also standardize uh, the format for, for storing floating point numbers. So the Y equals 0.0F. .0 all right, that's my default constructor. ambiguate between the parameters and the member variables, or not the member variables, member variables in C++, the properties, just be careful of the, yeah, to disambiguate between those I use this, this dot radius equals radius, <coughs> this dot x is equals to x, and this dot y is equals to y and that's kind of the standard way to do it all right so i've got radius x and y now i want to make a few things here which are going to, from the outside of this class they're going to look like fields but they're they're actually going to be calculated so let's make the first one the diameter and this is the syntax for doing this in c sharp right so first of all i want it to be public i want it to be a float and I want it to be a property. So the convention in C-sharp when you're making properties is that you start your property with an uppercase character. So this property is D-I-A-M-E-T-E-R. How do you spell diameter? Is that it? Yeah. yeah, everyone agree? Okay, so the diameter. All right, so public float diameter. And then you put open curly brackets, close curly brackets, and you write the implementation of a function which is gonna calculate, or a method, which is going to calculate the diameter, and it's a getter. So you use the word get. All right. And what am I going to do here? I have to return the radius multiplied by 2.0f. That's 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 how you set up a property. So um, there's two new keywords in C sharp. In fact, there's three keywords related to this concept. There's get, set and value. They're the three new keywords, right? So get is uh, obviously when you want to return something, okay? And we said in this example here that diameter is not something that you can set. You can only set the radius. You can't set the diameter because the diameter is calculated from the radius. I guess what you could do, actually, you know, we could write a setter for this one as well. It's not too bad. The setter looks like this. If you set the diameter, then it basically has to uh, recalculate the radius, doesn't it? Would not be right? If you set the diameter is equals to 10, then the radius has to be equals to 5. So you just go radius equals value divided by 2.0f. So there's all the new keywords, right? You've got get, you've got set, and you've got value. So I'm just going to show you what those actually correspond to, okay? By making an instance of this class, and by making use of this property that we've just created. So here's my little program up here with all of the classes that we previously made. This time I'm going to make a class called circle. Circle C equals new circle. I'm going to pass in my parameters here. And you notice that it's giving me the two different constructors. One that takes no argument and one that takes three arguments. So I'll give this a radius of 10 and I'll give it a center point of... Uh, 100 and another 100 for the center points of the circle. So now I have my circle C. All right. You can go console.writeLine. C dot. And uh, when you do C dot, you notice that it's, it's showing you diameter here, as well as all the other methods and the other... Um, Type fields in the class. So anyway, you can go C dot diameter. Wow, look at that. So 
What's interesting is that looks, that's the same way you would do C dot radius and C dot X and C dot Y, wouldn't you? And you get access to the X and Y, but this time you can go C dot diameter. Now, what we need to do to figure out what's actually happening here is press F9 there to set the breakpoint. And when you, when we run the program, you'll see what actually happens, you know, and you'll see that that get is kind of like a method. And that that bit of code in between the open curly bracket and the closed curly bracket for the get now is going to get executed. So I'm going to hit uh, F5 to run in the debugger. I'm going to hit my breakpoint there, and then I'm going to hit F11 to step into the, the method. And you'll see that it's actually going to step into, uh, I think that's just because it's the right line thing. Do you want to continue being notified? No. Oh. Okay. Let me jump into here and set my breakpoint there instead. I don't know why I didn't do that breakpoint. I'll stop it and run it again. So I hit this line of code, hit F5, and you notice that the, the program has now jumped into that bit of code that's in the get. Do you see that? Everybody see that? So it's jumped up to there. That's, that's what a property is in C Sharp. So what it is, is when you want to specify something that's, for example, a calculated value like this, from the outside of the class, it looks like it's just a field, but it's actually calculated based on some other, some other fields in the class. And how you do it is by using get and set, these two new keywords. And these go inside the class that you're trying to make the getters and setters for. So, so like I say, it looks just like a method, you know, because it has a return. Uh, and from the outside, it looks like a, um, a field. So I'm returning the radius multiplied by 10, uh, multiplied by 2. So the radius is 10. The, the diameter, the diameter is going to be 20, isn't it? So the console.write line is finished. You can zoom out here. Let's have a look at this thing. And you'll see that it has printed out 20. Is that good? Everybody understand it? Does anybody want to ask any questions on the getter? Yeah, can you just explain just the whole get set again? Sure thing, yeah. So the purpose of it is if you want to make something that looks like a field, but it's actually calculated based on, let's say, a few other fields, you can set that up as a, what's called a property of the class. So properties can be either get or set. So to get means you're returning the value. To set means you're taking the value and you're passing it into the class. Um, and that's basically how you set it up. You set it up like this, using these three new keywords in C-sharp, get, set, and value. So I'm gonna explain how the set works, right? How the get works basically just, you know, this bit of code here will get executed whenever you try and, from the outside, get access to that property. And how we're getting access to it is just by using this, c.diameter, gets access to the diameter, get. Yeah? It's not an external class, you have to use default stroke at home. Say again? When you're calling an external class, in other words, you're calling a certain class from a class, do you not have yep. to have a default constructor there? I do have a default constructor, yeah. but I, I'm, I'm actually not calling the default constructor, I'm calling a three uh, argument constructor. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. See, if I, if I just had open closed brackets there, it would call the default one, but I'm actually yeah, yeah. calling the one with the three, the three parameters, so that's the one it's going to use. So anyway, that's how you do the get, right? How you do the set is you just use, use it as if it was a field. Diameter equals 100. So if I set the diameter equals to 100, then that means the radius is going to be equals to 50. So watch what happens here when I do this. C dot diameter equals 100. So I'm going to press F9 there. Press F9 there. Hopefully it will debug this. But if it doesn't debug it, we might just need to set another breakpoint. Okay, so that's that first one. Then I'm going to press F5. So I've reached this line of code here. And I'm from the outside, this looks like I'm actually setting uh, a field on the class. You know, it looks like this a field called diameter, but in fact, there's no field called diameter. There's only a radius field, and then the the the, the, uh, the the diameter is calculated from the radius. So watch what happens when I press F11, which is step into. Didn't step into it. Alrighty. What I can do is set the breakpoint to make it explicitly stop at that line of the code. C dot diameter equals 100. So what happens here is this 100 gets passed in as a parameter to the setter, and it gets passed in 
via this keyword in C-sharp called value. So there's now an implicit variable called value that gets created and it's assigned the value 100. So if I press F5 now, it should jump into this set bit here. So you can see it's actually, you know, it's, it's, it's immediately jumped to this line of the code. Value is what I've passed on the right hand side of that. So value is equals to 100. And so therefore it's going to calculate the radius is equals to the value divided by 2, which is correct, isn't it? Because the radius is actually the, the value divided by 2. So then you hit F10. Excuse me. And, and that's how a getter and a setter works. Does that make sense? How do I use like, uh, I know it's not using a lot of programs, yeah. but every time you want to reference a variable, it will often calculate it. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Is that like counterproductive? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, if you look at really a lot of the C++ books and a lot of the OO books, they say that you should make all of your um, fields private and just get access to them via what are these things are called accessors in other languages, getters and setters. Because it's, I don't know, um, I mean there's certain advantages to doing things like that. For example, you know, if you want to, it's kind of hard to give really, really clean examples here. Um, say you had a class and you were trying to debug the class and you wanted to find every time the value was changed you wanted to print something out or, or write something to a log file. So that's going to be very difficult to do unless you actually make use of something like this, a property of it. Because you can actually put code and you can say anytime somebody tries to send a value in for this property I want you to do something with it, write it to a file. You know? The other thing as well is, I mean this is a trivial example. And we'll do a couple more examples. We'll do the radius and we'll do the circumference. But sometimes it is a bit more difficult, you know, to actually get access to the, the information you're looking for. For example, in this example here, these are all just integers and floats, right? But you could imagine that there's some property on a class and it has to do some, some pretty complicated things. Maybe it has to go and connect to another server on the internet, you know, to go and retrieve some information. Or maybe it has to go and run an SQL query against the database. So the whole point here is from the outside, it just says, hey, you go and calculate that value. I don't care how you do it, and then just send me back the results. So that, that's, that's where you might make use of these. You get my point? But yeah, there is a bit of an overhead. And it kind of annoys me when you see this done to an extreme. For things like floats and ints and stuff, I would just make them public. Because you're just getting and setting a float. You know? It's just an overhead to actually call a piece of code. In actual fact, in Java, if you wanted to do the same thing in Java, what you actually do is you write a method called get radius, and it returns the radius value from that. And for set, it, it returns void, but it takes a parameter of the value that you want to pass in. That's the Java way. It's also the C++ way, but C Sharp has this, and this is described in C Sharp as syntactic sugar. It's a little convenience thing that's been added to the language to make these, and I think it's great actually, I, I, I quite like these. We'll do a couple more. So the diameter is something that you can get and you can set, right? But we'll say the the uh, right, uh, the circumference and also the area, right? Public public float area. So the area is always calculated. You can't set the area of the circle. We'll we'll make that rule, even though technically you could, and it would just recalculate it based on the radius, but. Doesn't make sense. It's something that's always going to be calculated. How do you calculate the area of a circle? Can anybody remember? Pi or squared. Pi or squared. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, yeah it is pi or squared. Yeah. Um, so here's an example, by the way, of a, um, a static. Right? Remember we talked about statics last week? Can anybody tell me what a static is? This is very important. I will. I 100% I guarantee you there's a two-mark question on this in your exam, and I haven't even thought about the exam yet. But there most certainly will be, even maybe a, a five-mark question on it. So just get this one right. The default variable for a bunch of arguments. Exactly. It applies to the class rather than an instance of the class. So there's a great example of one. There's a class called math, okay? And there's a static in there called pi. Right? Because pi is pi. It doesn't apply to, you know, it doesn't ever change. So... 
they want to make it a constant that you can get access to all over the place. So it's made a static member of the math class. So math.py gives you the value for pi. So it's pi multiplied by r multiplied by r. Right. Public float area. Get now. What have I done wrong here? Oh, sorry. It's radius anyway. Oh, not multiply by this. Multiply by radius. I think that's going to work. I think I just need to recompile it. Mechanical view, okay, right, no problem, that's easily fixed. Right, the issue here is, and this would work no problem in C, by the way, or C++. Can anybody, I'll just show you what the error is, and we'll see if we can figure it out. Can they implicitly convert type double to float? Yeah, math.py is double, so you can pass. Very good. So math.py is a double, and radius is a float. A double is a 64-bit number, and a float is a 32-bit number. So it's saying here, you're trying to convert something from 64-bit format to 32-bit, you might lose some information when you're doing that. You need to explicitly put the word float in like that. Float, math.py, multiply by radius. Brackets around it here to make sure it does that bit correctly. <coughs> and there we go, Bill succeeded. So that's got rid of that one there. So there's the area value, okay? Watch what you can do over here. You can now go Console.write line c dot area. And look at that. Again, it looks from the outside like it's just another field. But actually it's a calculation that's performed on the, the radius value. And uh, I'm not going to set my breakpoint there. Oops. Debug. Stop debugging. Jump in here and set the breakpoint inside here for our area for that one. So when you go C dot area, press an F5, you'll see that it actually jumps into this piece of piece of code here. And then it will go and calculate it, and then that's what's going to get printed out. Just like a method. And so if you look at the console. So there you go, it's, it's calculated. Good, huh? All right, let's do one more, and then maybe I'll get you guys to write one yourselves. Let's do... Um, Public flow area, public flow uh, circumference. How do you spell circumference? C I R C U M P H E R. It's an F, no P H, is it? F E R E N C E, is that it? All right. The same thing, how do you calculate the circumference of a circle? This is going to become very important in about two weeks' time when we start doing X and A programming. Two point it's two pi r, yep. What you can do here is just take that, multiply by the, uh, the diameter. Very good. Oh, and we've got the same issue here that we need to cast that to be a float. Yeah, very good. So again, look at that. That looks like you're just making use of a member in the class, you know, a field in the class. But What's actually going to happen is when you use the word diameter here, it will jump down and execute this get, um, what do you call it? It looks like a method, you know? It's not quite a method. It's, it's, it's an accessor, I guess is the, the right word to call it. 
Right? So yeah, it's going to make use of diameter here, and it will actually do this get thing. So we'll just take the radius multiplied by two. All right. Um, one more thing which almost all classes implement, it, or should implement, is a two-string method. And that's because there's quite a number of times when you want to create a string representation of what's stored in the class. So you can go public string to string. class called two string. When would you think that's going to get called? When you explain, explain the parameters of the Yeah, it's well, it's it's whenever you want to, to basically generate a, a string representation of a class. But can you think of any examples of when that might implicitly get called? When you're printing out to the console. Exactly. You can go console dot right line. C, all right, and implicitly it's going to call the two-string method when you when you do this. Console dot right line implicitly calls the two-string method, so that's why it's a good idea whenever you're making a class that you make a two-string method on it as well. So we have to link the most part of the now straight away as a two-string. It knows, it knows. So that that's why you make a two-string, and it always has to take no parameters and it has to return a string. So you can see here when we do F5, hit that line. Okay, that's my area, F5. And then when I do console.right line again, let's try F11 here. Oh, it didn't work. Didn't step into it. Oh. Oh, oh, one thing we've forgotten. I have forgotten, not we. When you're making the string, and this will be clear in the next class when we talk about inheritance, but you have to put the word, anyone? That might have read ahead in the book. When you're changing the behavior of a method which is in a base class, anyone read that bit of the book yet? No, no problem. You put the word override. Public override string to string, all right? So if Brian can just explain what that does again the two string. No problem. Well, let's just make it work first. <coughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, it worked okay there. All right. I think the best way to explain it is to look at the example program. <coughs> so the first thing is... The two string, the signature for the two string is always exactly like this. It's always public override string, two string, and it takes no parameters and it returns a string. So the purpose of it is, you know, you think there's lots of examples when you're storing lots of information in a class and you need to print it out or write it to a file. So this is a convenience that C Sharp provides. When you make this method part of your class, the two string method, over here in program.cs, I've just gone console.write line C. C being the instance of the circle class. I haven't gone print the area, print the radius, print the x and y. You just go C. But implicitly, when you use console.write line and you pass in an object here, it will implicitly call the two string method. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a convenience. Whenever you, if you didn't have one there, what do you think it would print out? Would it work? I think it will just print out the instance of the class and maybe the memory address or something like that because you get one by default. But it's a good idea whenever you're making a class that you write a two-string method as well. Um, you know what? I don't think we'll start the inheritance stuff today because you've got kind of a couple of new concepts. We'll start the inheritance thing in the next class. Do you guys want to write a small example of this before we finish? Have you 100% got it? 
Sorry, the Brian, the, yeah. the, the, in the two string metal, what's the override for again? Yeah, no, no problems. We haven't done it yet. So the, the, the what it's for is, is to do with this concept called inheritance in OO programming and in C sharp. So it's only needed when you're inheriting classes. Yeah, and you might look at this and you say, well, what's this inheriting from? Um, the way you do inheritance in C sharp, which we haven't done yet, but we'll do it in the next class. I'll do a, a nice example of it. Is you put colon like that and you say what class you're inheriting from. But in this one here, there's nothing. So what am I inheriting from here? Yeah, good one. Yeah, you, you've got you've kind of got it there. Ninety percent of it. Everything, whether you say it inherits or not, it actually it inherits from a base class called object in C sharp. And if you don't explicitly, you don't have to put it in. It's just it's it, implicit that everything extends. <coughs> Here's an example, right? If you jump over to this program here and you take C C dot. So we have circumference and diameter. There's two string x, y radius, but look, there's three extra ones here that we haven't written. I didn't write this. I didn't write equals. I didn't write get hash code or get type. So they actually come from the implicit base class that everything extends from, which is object. And even the two string, if you didn't write a two string, you get a two string, which just returns maybe the, the, the uh, class name and the memory address or something like that. But this won't, won't really make sense until I give an example of inheritance, which we'll do in the next class. Just, just while you asked the question today. Yeah. No, that's a good question, right? You don't. That's that's why it's called, and it has to be called two string with an uppercase T and an uppercase S. It's because the C sharp framework. Um, it's kind of built in that if you put a method called two string, you, when you don't explicitly call it like this, it, it will call it for you. Right. Well, it, 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 it doesn't, you know, because I, I've written it, but, but up here, it will know explicitly to call that method because I haven't actually, you know, what it's basically doing here is it's trying to convert the class to a string in order to print it. So that's why it implicitly calls the two string method. Okay. So if you don't say it, so here's another example for you. If you did something like this, S-T-R-I-N-G. Uh, string s equals plus c. There's another example there. You know what it's going to try and do here, because you can do this. You can go string s equals the empty string plus c. This is another example here where it's going to try and convert the class to a string so that it can add two strings together. And in this example here, it will actually call the two string method to make a string version of the class implicitly. So two string is built into the C sharp language. It's also built into Java. It's not in C sharp. It's not in C plus plus though. So what have we So we'll call the right one for depending on what the class is. If it's a circle class, it calls the circle one. If it's a square class, it will call the square one. It depends on what the instance of the class is. You know, it depends if it's an instance. Don't forget that this is um. It's in the circle CS file, and it's in, it's within the open and closed curly brackets for the circle as well. Which means that it's you know it's a method on the circle, and you can only call that particular method on instances of the circle. If you called it on a dog, it, it's not going to work. You know, or, or it would have its own one. Well, I don't, yeah. When you declare the whole class as public, yeah, does that not govern the you know the visibility of every method and function and everyone else inside it? No, it only governs. You specify public for every variable in there as well. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't actually. It only it's only for the visibility of the class. Okay. Um, and I would suggest that you always use public. You can still make things private. But again, private doesn't, I suppose private does make a bit of sense. But we maybe do that in the next class. Because so I don't want if to you need public out your variables, do you get nowhere with them? Or is this private? Or is, is public just a default? I think it depends on what the default is in C sharp. I think the default okay. in C sharp is private. Okay. Um, the default in Java is protected, but I think in C sharp it's private. So it's slightly different. Um, but no, it doesn't govern the whole thing. You can still make things private. Um, that, just forget about what public class means and just always put public in there. Otherwise, it's just, it's one of those things that's, in my opinion, it's, it's in C++ and they brought it into C Sharp, but it's a bit pointless. Everyone just puts public in there. In, uh, in Java, you use the private, get the set method. You use the private with this. Yeah. 
Um, in Java, what you would do is you'd make the get and set methods public, but you might make the variable itself private. You can do the same thing here. Oh, here, one last thing then, okay? If we're not going to do an example, sometimes even for things that are actually fields, you might want to do getter and setter for those as well. So it, this is why I'm doing these area and diameters, because it's immediately clear that these are calculated. But sometimes you might even want to make these for ones that aren't calculated. And there's a really easy way to do that in C-sharp, uh, in Visual Studio. You just right-click on it, you click on refactor on the variable. What does refactor mean? Can anyone tell me? Refactoring is incredibly useful. Once your program has become slightly <laughs> big and complicated, refactoring allows you to do stuff like rename variables in a clever way. So if, if you know, it will, it will search through your whole project and rename the variable. You can rename methods, but you can refactor and you can click encapsulate field and then it says the field name is called radius the property name is radius you want to update all references just external ones click on apply and look what it's done now i haven't really explained what private means either but look private float radius is now it's changed from public to private and it has made a getter and setter for that variable do you see that so that's called refactoring. But this is basically making a getter and setter for something that is actually a, a field already. But now, the, um, the property is called radius with an uppercase R, and the field is called radius with a lowercase R. And it's made it private. Can anyone tell me what private means? You can't access it outside of the class. Exactly, you can't access it outside the class. I'll show you what that means. I'll spend a bit more time on this next class as well, but you can do something like, C dot radius now, okay, with an uppercase, and it will call the get and set methods on that. Call the get and set accessors, but if you try and do C dot or with a lowercase or, it might even show you that it exists. In C++ it would show you that it exists. At least. No, it doesn't even show you, you see? Because it's private, it's hidden from the rest of the program when you use the word private. Is that all right with everybody? So the main thing today is fields and properties. And uh, the next day, I'll probably go into this, I'll do another example of this, and we'll start looking at the idea of inheritance. All right, everybody? We leave it at that for today then? Cool, all right.